Chromatic Ori. Seven. Sphinx of the Guild pack. Five. Door to Nothingness. Go. Need some new Commander cards? Well, you can pre-order Commander Legends now from our amazing sponsor, Card Kingdom. Just head on over to cardkingdom.com. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of a Against the odds. And we got a spicy one this week. Last week on our poll, it was door to nothingness that take home an easy win. So today, we are heading to modern for five color colorless door to nothingness. That's right. We are playing a deck with no colored mana sources, essentially. I mean, that's a slight exaggeration. There's a couple of things that like kind of tap for colored mana. But really, we're playing an all colorless deck and activating an artifact that requires two mana of each color to win the game. How is the plan going to work? What is the ridiculous idea of this stack? Well, let's talk about it. Jump into some games, see if five color colorless door to nothingness can actually work. So, of course, our winning card, our name's a card, the build around card, door to nothingness. Five mana artifact comes into play tapped, and then we can pay two mana of each color. So, ten total mana, sacrifice it, and make target player lose the game. So, that's what our deck is trying to do. Obviously, to in with door, we need a couple of things. We need to play a door, for one. We need to untap the door, or untap with the door on our next turn, and then we need two mana of each color. If we can pull off those three things, we win the game by making our opponent lose the game. So how do we actually make door to nothingness work in a mono colorless deck? And the answer here, and our most important non-door card, is Chromatic Ori. And Chromatic Ori, it's a really powerful card all by itself. I mean, seven mana taps for five mana. We can pay five to have it draw cards equal to the colors among permits we control. Most importantly, we can spend mana, although it's mana of any color. And it's almost like Chromatic Ori is built to combo with door to nothingness. So Chromatic Ori, it does a couple of things. First off, it makes sure that we always have the right colors of mana for door to nothingness like any 10 mana will turn on door to nothingness if we have chromatic ori out because we can spend our mana however we want to secondly it ramps into our door to nothingness one of the sweetest parts about chromatic ori is it taps for five mana so that means if we can ramp into ori we can cast ori we can tap it for five mana immediately use that five mana to cast door to nothingness and then when we untap the next turn we'll have ori mana plus the rest of our mana to activate door and win the game. So that's the main plan of our deck. So how are we actually getting enough mana to do this? Like, that's the challenge of this deck. Door to Nothingness, 10 mana is a lot. So we have three different plans, essentially, to actually pull this off. One plan in is like the dice ramp plan, essentially, using Surge Node and Core Tapper to add counters to Astral Corticopia and Everflowing Chalice, which can ramp really explosively, really quickly. Like, we can even cast the X spell artifacts for zero mana and then just trust that we can add charge counters to them, and then they tap for mana equal to the charge counters, so like Core Tapper, if we can play it, and tap it, and sack it to put the counters on Astro Cornucopia, it's essentially like a Black Lotus. It's plus three counters, that's plus three mana, but it's permanent, a permanent Black Lotus. So that's ramp plan number one. Ramp plan number two is... We're dirty Tron players. Tron lines up really well with Chromatic Ori because it's seven mana, and that's exactly the amount of mana that Tron makes. So one of our nut draws for this deck is just to use, like, Expedition Map or our Tron Luck to get down Tron maybe on turn three, play a turn three Chromatic Ori. We can also play Door to Nothingness on turn three with the Chromatic Ori mana. Then we untap on turn four with something like 12 mana in a minimum, activate Door to Nothingness, win the game. So that's plan two. Plan three is we have two Cascading Cats. So that's one of our cards that technically can make colors of mana. It adds five mana of any combination of colors. So we can use Expedition Map or Golos to tutor out both Cascading Cataracts, and then we can activate them both, which can make double Wooberg for Door to Nothingness, and then we can win the game that way. Also, Golo's really good at digging through our deck to find Door to Nothingness. Because of Ori making all of mana any colors, and Cascading Cataracts, we can Golos, get a land to ramp with it, maybe a missing Tron land, the Cataracts, and then spin it to try to find our other combo pieces. So those are our three main plans. My other favorite part of this deck is Sphinx of the Guild Pack. So Sphinx of the Guild Pack, it's another seven mana colorless card, so it works perfectly with Tron. Tron, all by itself, once it's cast it, it is a seven mana five five 
flyer that has hexproof from monocolored. So it dodges essentially all the removal spells that anyone would be playing in the format, and it is all colors. So the combo here, apart from giving us a big hard to kill flyer, is chromaticory. When we pay five and tap it, we can draw cards equal to the number of colors among permanents we control. Well, Sphinx of the Guild Pack, it's all colors, even though it's technically kind of colorless. So that means chromaticory activation with Sphinx out is draw five. Another way to dig through our deck, find our combo pieces. Voltaic Key is to untap our door to nothingness, but it's also fine untapping like our mana rocks, chromatic ori to make more mana, to draw more cards, uh, but essentially it makes it so we can kill a door to nothingness without passing the turn. For removal, we got one all is dust since all of our stuff is colorless. Blast Zone for removal in the mana base. We've already talked about most of our lands, the only lands we haven't talked about. Inventor's Fair, more ways to tutor up our door to nothingness and our chromatic ori. Karn's Bastion can proliferate onto our mana rocks to make more mana. One waste, just in case we get like Path or Ghost Quarters or something. As far as the sideboard, we get a bunch more removal. Spatial Contortion, Ratchet Bob, Engineered Explosives, more All is Dust. Clearwater Goblet, really hilarious with our charge counter plan. Uh, it has Sunburst, comes into play with counters equal to the colors of mana we spent on it. So if we have Ori, it can be all five colors. And the beginning of our upkeep, we gain a life for each charge counter on it. With the help of Proliferate and adding charge counters with like Core Tapper, we could potentially be gaining, I don't know, seven, eight, 10, 20 life a turn of the late game. Graft Digger's Cage to shut down graveyards and collected companies and Chords of Calling. Chalice of the Void is our main combo hate. We can also manipulate the counters on it with our charge counter stuff. And that is five color, colorless door to nothingness. That's our against the odds deck for this week. Let's jump into our games, see if the plan can work. Can a colorless deck make double Wooberg to win the game? How quickly can we get the door kill? Can we get any door kills? Will the plan even work? Let's get to the videos, find out. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. All right. Uh Against the odds time, it is door to nothingness time, and uh, we'll keep this. I mean, we don't have a door, but as long as this surge node sticks, we can make mana, and hopefully we draw more lands, and then hopefully Golos finds this door, and uh, and ways to win with it. Snow covered planes for our opponent. You know, there's a sphinx. Play a land. Play a surge node. Go. Yeah. We would still like to draw lands. I mean. We can kind of make it work if we don't, but we would much prefer to draw lands. That, oh God, all right. Land, please. All right, that's a land. So we will Astral Cornucopia X zero. Start putting counters on it, pass the turn. Uh, Boonin. Head says, sure, sure, sure. Down to 18, Horizon Canopy. Giver of Runes, Stone for it. Well, opponent's got a clock. Gets a batter skull. Ooh, another land. Well, play the land. One, two, three, four. All right, so put a counter on Cornucopia. Everflowing Chalice. Sadly, only X1. Pass the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Oh, boy. If our opponent has Leon and Arbiter, this gets very scary. Opponent, you're going to get in hit us. Yeah. Down to 16. Sacks Horizon Canopy passes. Ooh. Well, we draw the Cataracts, so play the Cataracts. Counter on Cornucopia. Play. Let's think about this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we could play this X2 because of Thalia. All right, let's just. Actually, no, we got to go lows, I think. Let's play Golos. Golos gets us a Inventor's Fair past the turn. Well, hopefully Golos sticks. We would love to be able to spin it. Opponent's going to put the Batter Skull into play. Untaps. All right. No dying, Golos. We really, really need you to live. Planes for our opponent. Stoneforge X2. Ooh. All right, that's scary. Maul the Skyclaves. Put it on the germ. That's a clock. That's a clock. Is it too much of a clock? It's really going to depend on what this Golos finds. But it gets it, hits us. Down to 10. We go up to 11. Cornucopia. Well, charge counter on Cornucopia. Add a mana of each color. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I mean, Golos. All is dust. Oh, okay. That gets rid of Thalia. Let's us play the Ori, which lets us Everflowing Chalice X2, which lets us Astral Corticopia X1. Oh, that was that was a beautiful goal, is it? Go to combat, attack. And we have the Sphinx in hand, which is huge. Wow, that all his dust hit was so good. Golos number two. Get a Tron land past the turd. Now all we got to do is find the door. We're a door away. And we bought ourselves a lot of time with that hit. Opponent passes. We gain a life. Opponent passes Golos. We will get a waste. Gain a life. Well, we will move a counter to Cornucopia. Five, six, seven. Play Sphinx of the Guild Pack. One, two, three, four, five. Draw five cards. Play a Blast Zone. Play a Surge Node. Play a Core Tapper. Pass the turn. Ho! Oh, door. We need a door. We need a door. Phone it, picks up the batter skull. Can put it back down. Yup. Batter skull returns. Phone it. Passes. We gain a life. Cornucopia. Well, we will put a charge counter on Everflowing Chalice. Counters on Everflowing Chalice. Draw five cards. Tower Mine Power Plant. Crack Inventor's Fair. Get door to nothing does play door to nothing does expedition map counter on a cornucopia i mean we got the door win unless our opponent can blow up an artifact we have the door i mean technically it's correct to keep putting counters on cornucopias and then multi-kick x4 multi-kick x2 cast x1 pass the turn no attacks can you stop the door can you stop the door? Does not care about your life total. <laughs> Opponent, giver of runes. Certainly. That is acceptable. <laughs> Sphinx. Sphinx showing its power. Opponent, passes. Land, out of cards. We untap, and uh, it's time. Well, we will float our mana. Door to nothingness. Thanks to Chromatic Ori. Thanks to the card draw from Sphinx of the Guild Pack. And, I mean, this is almost exactly how we drew it up. Click, 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 and door you, and... <laughs> Got him! All right, that was, uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> wow, we made a lot of mana. Wow, how much mana do we have here? Seven, we play a Tron land, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14... 21, 25, 26, 27, 22 died, 34, 35, 40? 40 mana. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. More than enough to get the door win. Okay. Opponent got up. We did get a little lucky there. That Golo spin into, into the sweeper was huge. Uh, so I think we basically do the same thing. Spatial contortions in. All is dust in. What do we cut? We can go down a Voltaic Key. Probably go down, like, one Golos, one Expedition Map, and one... Or one Everflowing Chalice, and eh, one Expedition Map. Let's try it like that, I think. Do we want... <sighs> Ratchet Bomb and Engineer's Explosives could also be good. Hmm. <clears throat> all right, let's try it. Let's just try it like that. That's fine. I mean, all this does is a big one, as we saw in that game. <laughs> that was a really good spin. <laughs> Whew. Well, Golos power. Um, hmm. That's an expensive hand. We we're going to mulligan that. This is actually a pretty scary matchup because our opponent has... Because our opponent has a, a bunch of strip mines, which can be very good against our deck. We got lucky that they didn't have Leonin Arbiter. Leonin Arbiter is really scary for us. Well, Expedition map go. No Arbiter, please. Snow-covered planes. Arbiter. Yeah. Well, play a... Inventor's Fair. Uh, go. Oh, yeah, this Arbiter's really, really, really bad for us. 
opponent vials in. Giver of Roots. Vial. Up to two. Opponent goes attacking. Hits us. Down to 18. Horizon Canopy. Oy, sword. Uh-oh. Yeah, this is bad. This is bad, bad news. Opponent. That's interesting. This can give protection from colorless, though? Ugh. Well, I mean, I don't think we have any choice but to run out this cornucopia. This does leave us very open to getting strip mine, but I don't think we got a choice here. Opponent vials in. Another ar- oh dear, another arbiter. All right, and they get to sword? Uh, yeah, not feeling confident about this. These arbiters are really good for our opponent, as is the Sword of Fire Nice. Equips it. Hits us for eight. So I think our best bet is to draw land and be able to go lost to have a blocker, and also maybe ramp towards... Oh, we can't... <clears throat> yeah, so bad. Yeah, we're just, like, Arbiter locked. These Arbiters are really absurd against us. Vile's it. Phyrexian Revoker. I assume they named Blast Zone. Well, that doesn't work, does it? Oh, it does. All right, well, we don't draw the land anyway. And we will scoop it up. Yeah, so that didn't go as well. Uh, Leonin Arbiter's really good against our deck. Really, really, really good. Um, hmm. Well, maybe we bring in the Ratchet Bomb. It's hard to find room, but it's probably worth it. So Ratchet Bomb in. What do we cut, though? I guess that's maybe one more Chalice? Revoker is good against us, too, because Revoker is the one that actually shuts down mana abilities. So revoking, like, a Cornucopia is actually absurd when re uh, when Pithy Needle on Cornucopia doesn't do anything. Well, we get to play first, which is hopefully good. Well, we'll keep it. We got the Surge Node. We got the All Is Dust. I guess that's our game plan, is to make manas and try to get to All Is Dust. Well, Inventor's Fair and Surge Node. Go. Opponent. Planes. Giver of runes. Well, oh, Blast Zone. Chalice. Multi-kick at X1. Pass the turn. Please no revokers. Thalia. Well, counter on Chalice. Opponent. Passes. Well, put a counter on Chalice. Core Tapper. Pass the turn. Opponent. Getting and hitting us. As long as we don't get revoked, we're in pretty good shape. Down to 18. Ghost Order. Archon of Amiria. Ooh. Wait, do we get to all his dust this turn? I think we do. Well, Core Tapper. Charge counter on Chalice. Sack Core Tapper. Charge counter on Chalice. Surge Node. Counter on Chalice. All is dust. Pass the turn. Okay. Please. Nothing go wrong with this. <laughs> with this Chalice. Stoneforge, yes, that's fine. Gets a Batter Skull. Gets an Arbiter. I'll play Blast Zone. Seven, eight, nine. Play Cornucopia X3. Pass the turn. So we want to start putting counters on two differently named Mana Rocks because of Phyrexian <laughs> Revoker. So our opponent can strip Minos, but that doesn't matter a whole lot. A flow to Mana. Counter on Cornucopia. Pay for Arbiter. Get our Wastes. Opponent. Gets and hits us. Down to 17. Give her rooms. Well, alright. Uh, let's keep doing what we're doing. Surge Node, Counter on Cornucopia. All is dust. G Go Los. Get a... Cascading Cataract. Go. Okay, I mean, we're in pretty decent shape at the moment. And we got the door in hand. Giver of Roots, Returns, Paths. Eh, well, now our opponent knows we're out of lands. Yeah. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, let's think. Seven, Chromatic Ori. Seven, Sphinx of the Guild Pack. Five, Door to Nothingness. Go. And, uh, that looks like game to me. Opponent needs to draw Artifact Destruction this turn, or the door's got him. Opponent, Desperation Sack. Yeah. And passes. And we untap. And we door to nothingness. Oh, boy. All right. It is a little clunky. Click, 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 click. And, I mean, we got it, though. We got the door win. This is exactly what we were trying to set up. <laughs> it's possible. Click, click. Sphinx of the Guild Pack, also doing work. Click, click, and good game. 
Death of Taxes, which is a legitimate deck in modern. One of the top tier decks with the Bobet. But door too good? Door too good? <laughs> oh, that was a sweet one. That was a sweet one. Okay. Well, I mean, that is pretty much exactly what our plan was with the deck. We could have also started drawing ridiculous amounts of cards, but our opponent was being nice enough to actually sit through the kill when they were obviously dead if they couldn't deal with uh, our door to nothingness. So, out of respect, just uh, killed our opponent quickly. But we could have also drawn five cards with the Sphinx there. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> door. Door time. Sweet. All right. Against the odds time. We are door to nothing. Door to nothing. Yes. And uh, at the moment, we're just uh, Dirty Tron players, where we actually just have <laughs> Natural Tron in hand. So we're going to have the mana. The question's going to be... The question's going to be, uh, can we find something to do with it? We do have the door, which we can get down. So we're like Chromatic Ori away from winning. What we might be able to do is use Expedition Map to get Inventor's Fair, and then Inventor's Fair to get Ori to make the mana for door. I think that's our, our primary plan at the moment. I'd be surprised if our opponent takes Expedition Map at this point. Since we already have Tron, so it doesn't stop us from assembling Tron. Uh, alright. We will play Urza's Power Plant and Expedition Map. Go. Uh, Budent. Plays a land and passes. Uh, Budent. Oh. Hmm. Or we just draw a Chromatic Ori. That's even better. Uh, well, we will play... Urza's Tower, and let's just pass the turn in case our opponent has a ghost quarter. We can tutor up a missing trot. Like, this is... This is very close to the dream draw. I mean, no thoughts he's pleased, but that's Ori into door to nothingness into good game, well played opponent. Nice try. Thank you very much. Door to nothingness too good. Uh, put it. <laughs> uh, no, don't thought sees us, opponent. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, opponent. Kaya. Interesting. We are pretty okay with Kaya being a thing. Us, we actually have, we have the dream. So we get to play our missing Tron land, chromatic Ori, use Ori mana to play door to nothingness, and our opponent needs a way to, a way to answer that, or they're just dead, like immediately dead. I guess they could answer a Tron land, but. All right, we will play Urza's Mine. We will play Chromatic Ori. We will use our Ori mana to play Door to Nothingness. It's kind of like they were built to go together past the turn. And, uh, all right, opponent. Destroy a land, destroy the door, or meet your end. <laughs> uh, opponent's about to fall in the black hole. <laughs> uh, uh, put it. Whoa! They had the Field of Ruin, but they ran out Skyclave Apparition, which can't hit either combo piece? Skyclave Apparition not quite as good as our opponent thinks, and I don't know if they don't realize what's happening here. Okay, I mean, I guess Door to Nothingness Chromatic Ori combo is not something you normally play against, but while that Field of Ruin would have actually given our opponent a chance, sure, ex I don't think our opponent knows they're dead. I don't think they see the black hole. <laughs> but it passes alright well sure uh, tap 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 door you click 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 door door <laughs> uh, red red and uh yeah well the funny part is our opponent actually could have stopped that with a field of ruin at least for a turn or two <laughs> Well, got him, I guess. <laughs> Maybe this is just too busted. I mean, that was turn four. That was a turn four door to nothing, this <laughs> All right, opponent. Uh, I will say that uh, Skyclave Apparition is pretty good against us. I think we just probably bring in all his dust and maybe go like one Golos, one ever flowing chalice try it like that a little bit more removal well we got the win though which is the most important part uh well okay go this time i guess 
Conceal the Courtyard for our opponent. And Thoughtseize. I would guess they take Cornucopia, but we'll see. Probably depends on their hand. Oh, put it passes. Takes a core tapper, interesting. And okay. <laughs> Pun immediately punished by us drawing what they thought sees. <laughs> oh. It's always so frustrating when it happens on the other side, but it's kinda sweet when it happens in your favor. Bone it. Cracking. Well, we do know they have land destruction, which is a concern. Dark confidant, gonna get the card draw going. Well, oh boy. That's a good draw. Urza's mine, and let's run out Core Tapper as a, a distraction. Distraction scenario. We would like our opponent to focus on Core Tapper and not on, ooh, Ley Line. All right, well, that's fine. We can get around that with uh, with all his dust. We would like our vote opponent to focus on this Core Tapper and not so much on blowing up our lands because they don't know that we drew the missing Tron piece. Planes for our opponent. Opponent also took four off that Bob with... Hitting the ley line, probably the most expensive card in their deck. No land destruction. Stoneforge Mystic, sure. Getting Batter Skull, I presume? Sort of Feast and Famine, alright. Bout it. Passes. Now, well, Power Plant. Go Los. Get a. Opponent's gonna path it? Alright, opponent pass the Go Los. So we get Waste. And then we get. Cascading Cataract. And then we cast Cornucopia. Pass the turn. Actually, wait. Wait, wait, wait. We can charge this up. Oh, we can cast the other Golos. Okay, that's good. So charge this up. Sack it. Golos 2. Getting, I think, just Inventor's Fair. Pass the turn. So now our opponent has to deal with this Golos. Or else we get to spin next turn. And if we get to spin, who knows what could happen. Worst case, if we can spin into more artifacts, opponent hits a land. If we can spin into more artifacts, we can at least use this Inventor's Fair to start finding uh, our combo pieces. Opponent, got a Shrine, untapped down to 11. Opponent is also in a bit of risk of dying to their own bot ley line. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. So they can't lose to Door or Nothing this, this turn, but all his dust still gets rid of all of this. And we get the Golos activation. Another Inventor's Fair. Um... So let's see. One, two, three, four, crack. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ugh. One, two, three, four, crack. Get Ori. Play Ori. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we get to do it all. Oh no, we're missing. All right, never mind. We're missing an artifact. That's the problem. Uh, in that case, we will just cascade in cataracts, uh, add one of each color. Spingolos, get Core Tapper, Everflowing Chalice, Power Plant, go. Um, yeah, I guess we attack. Let's, uh, let's force this issue. Opponent's got this Bob, so they can't just do nothing forever, or they're gonna lose to their own Dark Confidant. Opponent, Bob, Liliana, down to five. Oh yes, our opponent is in danger of losing to their own Dark Confidant, for sure. And now we get to activate Inventor's Fair to get the Ori... I think. And then we can Inventor's Fair again to get the, the door. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks. Ah, uh, we will take two, opponent. <laughs> nice try, but we will take it. Sure. 18. You got us. We are going to have to hit the All is Dust, too, to get rid of the Ley Line before we can actually win, but... I don't know, maybe we're better getting, like, Sphinx and just trying to get the beatdown win. Opponent is in a fragile spot, thanks to the Star Confidant. Liliana. Takes down. We will set Core Tapper. And let's see. Crack Inventor's Fair. Get a Ori. Untap. Well, there's all his dust. Well, play Ori. Spin Golos. And see what we find. Hoping for door. And then we got the win next turn with with uh this all his dust. Now Sphinx of the Guild pack. Blast zone. Go to combat. Uh, you know what? Let's attack our opponent. All right, opponent blocks. We pass the turn. Dark Confidant, how brutal is it? Oh, down to th Oh, well, that does mean our opponent can take the all is dust. So our opponent's not quite 100% dead yet. And I guess we also don't have the door. But our opponent needs to stop the Sphinx. The Sphinx is actually just lethal. <laughs> oh, 
opponent takes up, we will discard a power plant, I guess. We already have two, so discard a power plant. Is if the Sphinx lives, we also get to draw five? Yeah, we're we're in absurd shape. Opponent discards Celeste Wow. This is technically all colors, but it has hexproof from monocolored, so our opponent can't kill it. Yeah, the Sphinx might just get there. <laughs> <laughs> Hexproof from Monocolor does stop almost every removal spell outside of, like, actual Wraths that people play in Modern, so that might just be enough. Pony needs, like, Lingering Souls or something just to, just to have blockers. They can get an Assorted Feast of Famine hit and uh, untap their stuff. That's kind of like a freebie. Tide Allo Sculler, okay. Huh. Well, there goes our Allus Dust. Yeah, but can you stop the Sphinx? That's the real question. Why did our opponent bring in Celestial Purge against our mono colorless deck? Huh. Uh, I mean, Celestial Purge is a good cyborg card. I have no. I don't think it does anything against our deck, though. I mean, I guess it's a good thing to discard to Liliana. Maybe that's the plan. Got to make sure you have something that's pain free to uh, discard to your Liliana pluses. <laughs> Bowed it. Yeah, I definitely think our opponent should have equipped and hit us with the Sword of Feast and Famine. Well, I mean, I guess we do the respectful thing and just hit you with the Sphinx? Well, not quite the door of nothingness win this game, but... <laughs> Sphinx is pretty underrated. This card is actually surprisingly hard for most decks to deal with. Well, we'll take it. <laughs> Sphinx. Sphinxtron. Sphinxtron. Picking up the wins. All right. Against the... Oh, boy, this hand's great. Against the odd time, it is door to nothingness time, and we have... Turn three. Oh boy, is it Ponza? <gasps> okay, just kidding. Life is horrible. <laughs> horrible, horrible, horrible. Well, expedition. Uh, Urza's mine. Expedition map. Go. Okay, so life is much worse now that we see our opponent is playing a land destruction deck. If we could get down our artifact mana, we have hope. But if our opponent blows up our Tron land here, we're left in a really awkward, really bad spot okay season pyromancer we can deal with that we can deal with the season pyromancer we really only need a single turn with tron drawing lands fine we only need a single turn with our tron lands to be able to chromatic orrery into golos and then we don't care so much about our opponent blowing up lands can we get one turn without a stone rain the bad news is our opponent's land destruction is probably pillage which also blows up artifacts, but we'll see. Opponent gets and hits us. Land. All right. This is going to make things harder. Uh, tower, mine, power plant. All right. This is going to be this is gonna be challenging. Well, play the power plant. Play Cornucopia. X1. We still have hope, though. We can still go loose into Chromatic Ori. We'll see what other threats our opponent has. Yeah, Blood Braid, that speeds up the clock. Oh, dear. Ugh. Okay. Hmm. Now things are looking pretty bad. The combination of this Blood Moon and a really fast clock probably kills us. Opponent discards their stuff, draws new cards. We're taking one, two, three, four, a million. Are we just dead next turn? We can block here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ugh. So I think we got a top deck like all is dust. Oh, actually, no, we're dead. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, we will scoop it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, this is probably a tough matchup for us. We can beat a Blood Moon, but, uh... Ugh. Yeah, that was that was tricky. All right, so we will bring in two more All is Dust and a Ratchet Bomb. We will go down one Golos, one Sphinx, and one Chalice. Run it like that. Hmm. Oh, that was so close to being really good for us. Yeah, Ponza is probably the matchup we want to play close to least out of uh, the entire format. Land Destruction and Blood Moon. Like I said, we can beat it. Like, we have the tools to compete with it. The issue is... The issue is uh, we got to do it quickly. And I'm not sure we can actually do it quickly enough. Well, we get to play first. Hmm. Yeah, let's mulligan. That hand doesn't do much. Well, this will keep. We will put door to the bottom for now. Well, tower and map go. Being on the play this game 
might mean we get to get down Golos before we get Blood Moon or Stone Rained. We'll see how much ramp our opponent has. Forest. Arbor Elf. Yeah. Opponent passes. Well, oh, boy, we're so close again. Oh, well, let's see what they got. <clears throat> Pass the turn. Stomping Grounds untapped. So opponent does have some way to mess with our lands, presumably. Oh, you oh boy. All right, all the manas. Utopia's Prowl in red. Well, what do you got, opponent? We just need to get down this Ori. Taps, untaps. Taps. Come on. Fade. Hold. N my goodness. Oh! Wow. All right. So that was the perfect card for opponent to cascade into. Times 100. Oh, no. Well, yeah, fair enough. Opponent. Hits the land destruction spell. And decent chance that that does it now. Gets and hits us. Ugh. Boy, we were super close to winning both of these, but I guess it was not meant to be. Play a ratchet bomb. Go. But the damage might be done here. Like, if our opponent can play one more big thing, even this ratchet bomb getting Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl is not going to be enough. And now we are about a million years away, unless we just luck into a Tron land. A million years away from Ori's and Golos's and Door to Nothingness. Oh, wow. I think it's mostly brutal because that was a random spin. If they just had it in hand, you chalk it up to... You chalk it up to... I mean, we're playing against a bad matchup, but spinning into it randomly with the Blood Braid makes it, uh, makes it way, more, way more brutal. Season Pyromancer. All right. Opponent discards some cards has a clothes yeah well come on missing tron land i guess like that's what we need to get in this game is just to top deck the missing tron land that's our hope and dream all wrapped up into a a top deck or two oh, cataracts uh cornucopia blow the ratchet bomb but i think it's just that that one wow that one random spin Saved our opponent. Oh, yeah. So opponent gets to eat stuff. We go to 12. We're taking 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Scavenging ooze. 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's got to be the Tron land off the top or we're dead. That's it. That's the game. Tron land off the top or it's game over immediately. Opponent. Well, come on. Urza's mine. Oh my god, that's Urza's mine. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's not over yet. Wow, that was a good draw. Ori, all is dust. The bad news is we're so... The bad news is we're so low on life that many things kill us. <laughs> we're in gut shot rage. Definitely lightning bolt rage. Definitely blood raid elf rage. Another clothes would be bad. Arbor elf, yup. Well, I'll send a bolt to the face. Wooded foothills, it passes. Well, uh, we will go Los, get a Inventor's Fair, spin go Los. Oh, come on, deck. Come on, deck. We did have some good Tron luck after our opponent's uh, good Cascade spin. I'll play another Ori, spin go Los. Number two, door to nothingness, door to nothingness, <laughs> Expedition Map. Storm Cow 5. <laughs> Expedition map. Oh! Well, can we fade a turn? Can we fade a turn? We need to not get hit by a bolt or a hasty flyer, and we have the door kill. Opponent cracks. Oh, please no. Storm Breath or something similar. Opponent. Land. One card in hand. Oh! Wow! Well, that was an interesting game, at least. Oh, brutal. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I guess I have to say, considering how hostile this matchup is and our opponent's cascade spin, our deck put up a pretty good performance. Boy, boy, oh boy. Well, that was the last card our opponent needed. All right. Against the odds time, we are playing Mono Colorless Door to Nothingness in 
modern. Uh, this hand. I mean, we got the door. This hand's just so slow. So slow. I think we got a mulligan it. It's just too slow. Oh, well, this we're going to keep and we're going to pray really hard that we hit lands. If we can start core tapping Everflowing Chalices, that'll make the mana to get to Golos, which will hopefully get us mana we need to spend Golos, which will get us door and then we'll win. That's the plan. Yeah, we'll try it. We'll keep. We'll put a Chalice to the bottom. We really need this uh, core tapper not get like thought seized or something. Pathway, the noblest of hierarchs. Well, probably don't have to worry about thought seize. Land, maybe? We do need a land for any of this to work. All right, that's a land. So Urza's mine, go. Uh, booted. Horizon Canopy. And Birds of Paradise. The opponent's got lots of mana. And the Giver of Runes. Gets in, hits us for one. Sure. Down to 19. Well, play Inventor's Fair. Play Core Tapper. Chalice, go. This can actually potentially get us to... Golos next turn? About it. Ooh. Alright, so gotta be quarter collected company. Well, let's charge up Chalice. Charge up Chalice. Hmm. Core Tapper. Chalice. Golos. Grab Cataract. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, we got a lot of mana. Are we dead? <laughs> collected company. Vizier. Spike feeder. Okay. So we're not immediately dead with what's on the battlefield, at least. We don't actually care about infinite life because door gets around that. About it. Heliod. All right. So opponent has infinite life, but infinite life doesn't kill us. Opponent passes. Play the mine. Let's see. One, two, three. So we get to play chromatic ori, spin golos. Well, let's see what we find. All his dust would probably be the best, but we only have one in the main deck. Door would also be good, because that would give us a chance of just winning next turn. Well, cast another Ori. Not a great spin. Yeah, let's just... Chalice X2, I guess. <laughs> Pass the turn. Pass the turn. Ooh, it is a bit a bit frightening. A bit frightening. Pwn it. Untaps. So we have 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we can double spin Golos next turn? Oh, we do need to find something, because if our opponent can find Devoted Druid, then their combo probably becomes lethal. Or or other things, depending on what they're playing. Opponent combat. No attacks. Gain a life. Well, there's a Sphinx. Well, let's spin a Golos. Still wouldn't mind the Aulus Dust. Golos spin number one. Well, Expedition Map. Cornucopia. Golo spin number two. That was, again, not a great Golo spin. Number two. Okay, there's All is Dust. So cast All is Dust. And the door to nothingness. That's exactly what we needed. I mean, that should be game. So our opponent gets to gain infinite life. Opponent loses their board. Door to nothingness. Expedition map. Chalice. That was a great spin. That makes up for the two previous spins. And, yeah, pass the turn. Not even going to attack. Like, opponent could have gained infinite life. <gasps> okay. Wow, watch them spin into the wind. Heliod, Spike Feeder. So, wow, they spun back into infinite life. But infinite life don't beat the door. And don't beat the door. No attacks. You are go, opponent. Kill us or kill the door, because the door is coming for you. Wow, it's working. It's actually working. Opponent. Okay, Ranger VO, sure. Or Ranger Captain VO, sure. That doesn't actually change anything. Gets a walking blista. But our opponent has infinite life, not infinite damage. Which I think means this door kill's good. Opponent passes. We get a life. We will... Door to nothingness. And, uh, still working. Door to nothingness has actually been absurd. The plan has been working amazingly well. Click, 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 and one more click. And gotcha? That is actually a pretty sweet example of how... Door to nothingness is good. Our opponent could have gained infinite life there. Like, pretty easily. They had it. They had infinite life. But uh, it just didn't matter. It just didn't make a difference. Because door to nothingness doesn't care if you're at a million or if you're at one. Dead is dead in the world of door to nothingness. Uh, all right. So, spatial contortion, spatial contortion. 
All is dust, all is dust. Go down. One key, one chalice, one golos, and one expedition map. Graftinger's cage could also be good. Is it good enough? It shuts down corn. Hmm. And a uh, collected company. Eh, let's try it like that. I think it's fine. Ratchet Bomb's probably also in the conversation, but... Oh, all right. <laughs> if we luck into the last Tron land, the sand could be sweet. Birds of Paradise for our it poo nint. Also, something to put our Core Tapper counters on would be decent. Uh, so Power Pat, please, Magic Gods. All right, Cornucopia is good. That is something to put our Core Tapper counters on. We'll see. Our opponent's deck can combo kill pretty quickly. We dodged the Vizier Druid kill last time. This Cornucopia is huge, though, because now we can Cornucopia Core Tapper. That gets to, uh, to Golos on turn three, even without help. And Golos gets us the Tron piece and gets us to all his dust. All right, there's a Heliod. Yeah, about it. Passes. Sphinx. Well, players is mine. Cornucopia, no counters. Core Tapper. Go. All right, let's see what our opponent has. Land. And passes. Well, we will charge up Cornucopia. Counters on Cornucopia. Go, Los. Get... Power Plant. Blast Zone. Go. All right, so our opponent kind of has to kill us again this turn. Or else or else we get to all his dust and set our opponent way back, so... Uh, boot it. Glad company. Okay, Ranger Captain and Conclave Men. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. Gets a Ballista. Well, this is a big turn. Opponent didn't find infinite mana. The Conclave Mentor does scare me. I feel like that can do some frightening things with Spike Feeder. That makes it infinitely big, right? Ballista, sure. Oh, so now we're now we're dead, right? Heliod Ballista, Life Link, yeah. Oh, a turn too slow. Oh, so close, so close. Yeah, that Conclave Mentor hit. I guess it didn't really matter. The Ranger Captain of Eos was uh was the big one. <sighs> All right, run it back. I mean, really, we were super close there. If we got to untap, we would just win. So, and we had a pretty fast hand, actually. Our opponent just happened to uh, to combo off even faster than we could combo off, or to stop them from comboing off. All right, we get to play first. Hmm, too slow, I think. We have two doors, and we have an all is dust, but it's so slow. Ugh. All right, well, this will keep. We'll put the door to the bottom for now. This hand is not exciting, but Spatial Contortion is good. That's a way we can disrupt our opponent's combo, potentially. Opponent passing. Uh, Core Tapper is very good. Well, play Cornucopia. No counters. Play Core Tapper. Ship the turn. Uh, boot it. Untaps. Well, that's good. This increases our chances of getting to this all is dust pathway. And about it. Passing. Now play a tower, charge up Cornucopia, Chalice X2, pass the turn. We could use like a Golos or something. Some way to start drawing cards. Opponent's off to a pretty slow start though. Opponent passing. We untap. Oh, there's, that's an Ori. Well, charge up Cornucopia, Ori. I mean, we got all the mana in the literal world. Now Sphinx would also be good. If we draw Sphinx, then we can start writing cards with this Ori. Opponent untaps. Pathway. They gotta have, like, they gotta have multiple collected companies. Opponent passes. Big draw, big draw. Mine. Oh, even more mana, but even less to do with it. Well, play the mine. So we have infinite mana, but we don't have anything to do with it. Opponent. Oh, we want a Sphinx so bad. Or just draw the door would be good now. Like, we have the mana to win with door. We have so much mana. Golos would be sweet. We could spit it. Like, any any finisher-type card would be good. Coco, one. Conclave Mentor. And Devoted Druid. Okay. Four is for our Ebooted. Heliod. All right. That doesn't beat us, though. Ballista. Sure. So now we have to kill the Ballista. Well, I guess we're tapping way too much mana, but sure, whatever. All right, opponent's going to kill our core tapper, so charge up Cornucopia. 
Wow, this ended up being super close. We still need a finisher, though. We could all as dust next turn to get rid of the Heliod and friends. But that doesn't necessarily keep our opponent from just reassembling. All right. Yeah. Charge, charge. Not that more mana is especially helpful or necessary here. So we dodge the bullet. Opponent untaps Devoted Druid. Wouldn't mind them just casting something else that we can all as dust. Opponent. Gets and hits us. Sure. Come on, deck. Something good, something big. Uh, opponent passes. <laughs> Uh, 1821. Well, so we can cast this X7. We have so much mana. <laughs> Corticopia X7. And all is dust. Pass the turn. <laughs> How much mana do we have? 11, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then, uh, 9 from Tron. So 28. Boy, we need a Golos, or a door, or a Sphinx, or basically anything that's not more mana. <laughs> Inventor's Fair, like you name it. Oh, okay, that's a Sphinx. That's one of the cards on our approved list. So we will play a Sphinx. We will draw five. We will play Door to Nothingness. I guess Surge Node Blast Zone? go all right i mean we'll see if our opponent can go infinite here we can still lose so it's gonna come down they do have another coco it's gonna come down to what this coco shows can they go infinite before we untap idol on a rhetoric doesn't actually matter rain okay so ranger captain of eos can get the ballista but i don't think our opponent can win with it we actually don't need to cast spells Oh, opponent's locked under their own Eidolon. So they can't... Oh, I think that Eidolon means that we can't lose here. So opponent can only cast one spell next turn. With only one spell, I, I mean, I guess they can just have a, a way to kill Door directly. But then we get to draw five again with Sphinx. Opponent, Desperation, attacking the land. Well, this has actually worked shockingly well. Sphinx, the sneaky all-star. Opponent said they, they want to path it, but then we're like, wait, <laughs> hang on. What is this card? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this deck's hilarious. Uh, about it. Well, they get one spell. I think they can't kill us. They don't have the pieces for it. So it's got to be a spell that deals with door. And that buys our opponent a turn. Opponent says they're one mana short. I'm not sure of what, but what one spell could they cast that would be relevant? Maybe they were going to try to, like, cord for, like, Knight of the Reliquary, uh, Knight of Autumn or something? Oh, uh, yep, that's what they said. Going to cord for Knight. An opponent gives us a GG's, and the door to nothingness keeps on sending opponents into the oblivion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, opponent, uh, having a nice friendly chat. Definitely a fun, uh, a fun chat with a, a fun opponent, so shout out to Gus13 for being a, a really fun opponent to talk with. And opponent passes. Well, we get to untap the door. We activate door, and, uh, yeah, send our opponent into the black hole, never to return, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Another door to nothingness win. Oh, that Sphinx was key. Sphinx is, like, it's sneaky good. It's really sneaky good in this deck. I think, like, unexpectedly good. And opponent, there you go. Suck him into the black hole and, uh, pick up the win. <laughs> door to nothingness still doing it with the help of the sphinx <laughs> oh nice 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 about it scooping it up scooping it up all right against the odds time we are who boy that's a hand that is a tron hand uh okay well we are uh playing some door to nothingness we have tron we have golos and the cataracts we do not have my oh, opponent forced negations well, sadly for our opponent, opponent plays a watery grave, untapped. Well, we will expedition map. Hers is mine. Go. Opponent thought scours a Croxa. Ooh, and a mana leak. Okay, so opponent has a lot of counters. That is a concern. I mean, we're going to have Tron. Can we resolve stuff through the counters is going to be the question. Spire Bluff Canal for our opponent. Fall. 
Ho! <laughs> Fall says two mana target player reveals two cards at random from their hand. They discard each non land revealed that way. Uh, our opponent revealed the two lands. It's like it's like really bad him to Torak. Oh boy. Okay. It's like really bad him to Torak. Chromatic Ori. And we will follow that up with Golos Tireless Pilgrim. Golos will get a Inventor's Fair. Go. Uh, boot it. Oh, wow, so that was pretty unlucky. I mean, odds our opponent would get one card, but double whiff, that's uh, that's pretty rough. I mean, that's an example of why Rise Fall does not see more play. Opponent really needs Artifact Destruction, or else we need to start spinning Golos. Or I guess Golos Destruction. Hmm, all right. Sure. They do have Artifact Destruction. Opponent passes. I'll play Tower, play Sphinx of the Guild Pack, pass the turn. I mean, if we get to tap, we get to draw five with Ori, which is absurd. Polluter Delta, cracks it. Like, if this is just opponent gets back Croxa, we're perfectly fine with that. Sure, 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 go for it. Opponent gets a Swamp. All right, looks like Croxa. Yep. So we go to 17. The bad news for our opponent, though, is... Yeah, let's crack map, get a tower. Just get as much mana as possible. So another tower. Untap. Draw five. Play door to nothingness. Tower. Core tapper. And pass the turn. All right, so now our opponent has to deal with the door, or we got the door kill. So they're back to DD Artifact Destruction. <laughs> or else we got him. Opponent goes to combat. Um, I think for safety's sake, we just block with Core Tapper. We'll discard Inventor's Fair number two. Block with Core Tapper. We don't really have anything to put counters on anyway. And I think, like, our opponent's Artifact Destruction or we just win when we untap. So no reason to take a risk of getting, like, burnout or something. Opponent passes. All right, that should do it. We gain a life. Three, six, ten. Door to nothingness. Mana any color, thanks to Ori. And lose the game, Grixis control? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful, 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 through the counters. We were a little lucky to have Natural Tron, that's for sure, but, I mean, we'll take it. What do we want against this deck? Chalice seems interesting. Although, hmm, Graph Digger Shade shuts down Croxa. Yeah, let's let's try Chalice. We haven't brought in Chalice. Let's bring in Chalice and see what happens. Uh, we will go down, I guess, a key. One Everflowing Chalice. One Sphinx, and eh, one Golos, I guess? Try it like that. We didn't get to see that much of our opponent's deck, honestly, so I feel like I feel like uh, not going too crazy sideboarding is probably worth it until we get uh, more information. Um, well, all right, we'll try it. Mana's a little light, but we do have a Chalice. Scalding Tarn. Opponent cracks it. And, ooh, it's a Delver deck. Interesting. Well, Urza's mine. Expedition map. Go. Delver. Ugh. Turn one flips. Okay. Steam vents. Untapped. Yes, Delver might be an issue. Opponent. Gets in, hits us. Down to 17. And Croxa. Uh, we will discard, I think, Door for now. We're so far away from the Door win at the moment. Uh, missing Tronland? Ori. Well, we will play Wastes. Chalice on one. Pass the turn. Opponent. Gets in with the Delver. Hits us. Passes. Another Ori. I'll play Blast Zone. Run out Cornucopia. Pass the turn. Opponent might have, like, a Braid. Okay, Thought Sour gets countered. Lightning Bolt gets countered. So they're just trying to fill their graveyard for Crocs, I guess? Well, okay, opponent hits the land. Gets and hits us. I mean, we are just dying to this Delver, which is kind of annoying. Down to 11. Opponent passes. Core Tapper. Well, we will play Core Tapper. Expedition map. Get a tower. Play the tower. 
pass the turn. Do they have artifact destruction? That is probably the biggest question. Opponent. Cracks the Delta. Almost to Croxa, too. Opponent's very close to Croxa time. Untap land. Ugh. <laughs> Archmage's charm, all right. That is hilariously bad for us. So it actually, actually means our opponent gets to play Croxa. So I think this means that we need to <clears throat> top deck Tron. Opponent. Oh, they got an island, so they can't Croxa. All right. Gets and hits us. Oh, come on, deck. Be good. Tron land, please. Opponent passes. Door to nothingness that we can't cast. Well, I think we charge up Chalice to shut down the Croxa. Pass the turn. Opponent. Thought seizes. Well, we're kind of just waiting for mana anyway. I think, sadly, we have to sack this Blast Zone. And kill this Delver this turn. Yeah, losing at Cornucopia was actually really bad. Archmages are pretty good. <laughs> actually, like, hilariously good against our deck. Opponent takes all this dust. Goes to combat. Well, yeah. Second to land. Kill the Delver. Opponent passes. Alright, door to nothingness. Doesn't do anything. Uh, Yeah, alright. Aggro time. <laughs> Cor Cordepper Agro. Put her taps. Oh boy, another Delver. That's less than ideal. Opponent passing. I'll go to combat attack. Opponent takes it. Oh, if this Delver flips, it's super bad. Cor. Oh, yep, that's right. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be us playing a Chalice deck if we didn't play something into our own Chalice. Opponent. Do they get the blind flip again? Not this time. Opponent plays a land. Oh, we need this Tron land so desperately. Opponent hits us. Down to seven. Opponent. Passes. Go loose. Oh, yeah. That Archmage's chart was huge. That was huge, huge, huge for our opponent. That really kind of just swung the game. There's the flip. Oh, it's a flip with a Coligan's command. Um... Yeah, so now we're dead. Okay, sure. Wow! Wowie zowie. Yeah, Archmage's Charm. Losing that Cornucopia mana. Insane. Insane for our opponent. Um, hmm. Delvers, eh? Well, I guess we probably need Spatial Contortions. How do we make them fit? Uh, maybe we go, like, three Chalices. And go down one more Everflowing Chalice. Try it like that. <laughs> Chalice does seem good against our opponent's deck, but now that we know we're, that they're playing Delver, we do want to be able to kill a Delver. We can't just let that happen again, where our opponent just plays a Delver and essentially just wins the game accidentally. All right, we get to play first. Hmm? All right, we'll keep it. We got mana. Not Tron mana, but we do have mana. Uh, so play Ways, play Surge Node, play Everflowing Chalice. Pass the turn. Uh, about it. Untaps. Watery grave. Untapped. And there's the Delver. Yep. Now, Blast Zone's not the worst. So we will play Blast Zone. Charge counter on Chalice. Core Tapper. Go. How's our opponent's Delver luck? Eh, not that good. No flip. Opponent. Good's in for one. Yep. We will take it. We would like our core tapper to stick around for a bit with two chalices. Opponent, Delver number two. Ooh, interesting. Oh, this blast zone's looking better and better. Oh, we untap, play power plant, charge up the chalice, charge up the chalice, cast another chalice, pass the turn. So next turn, we're definitely sacking and killing these Delvers. Opponent, do they get the flip? No. That might be good for our opponent, though, because I'm assuming they need another land, so they might not mind if they drew a land. All right, opponent draws a land. Sulfur Falls. Goes to combat. Hits us for two. Yep. Down to 17. And passes. Ooh, all this dust. Well, I think we... Core Tapper... 
Charge up a Everflowing Chalice. Surge Node. Charge up a Chalice. Door to Nothingness. Opponent lets it go. All right, and we will pass. Not going to play the Cataracts because of Croxa possibilities. Opponent bolts her face. Okay. Do the Delvers flip. Still not flipping. All right. Huh. The question is going to be, do we sack the Blast Zone or do we keep waiting? The longer we wait, the more counters we get to move around with Surge Node. I think, I think we can afford one more hit. Opponent hits us. Passes. We draw Cornucopia. Well, in that case, counter on Everflowing Chalice. Counter on Everflowing Chalice. Cornucopia. X2. Archmage's Charm to counter it. Yep. Well, I think that's actually better than Archmage's Charm to steal our... One of our Everflowing Chalices. Delver. So, Pona has gotten, like, unlucky with... Delver flips, but also, oddly, at the same time, lucky because it meant there was four lands in a row on top of their deck when they kept a one-lander, so <laughs> kind of kind of in between, I guess, luck-wise. All right, we'll take one more hit, down to ten. Untap. Oh, Sphinx would be sweet if we could resolve it. Well, Surge Node, counter on Chalice. Core Tapper, counter on Chalice. Sphinx of the Guild Pack, resolves. Well, we will pass the turn. Sphinx is kind of sweet because it does dodge a decent amount of removal. Bone it. Snapcaster for Lightning Bolt. All right, so maybe our opponent's just going to try to burn us out? I mean, we are dropping to seven. Yeah, bolts are face down to seven. Well, that's not a high life total. Opponent, Delvers. Flips with a Thought Scour. Flips with a Thought Scour. Goes to combat. Tags with everything. Uh, we will block Snapcaster. Uh, we really need... Uh, we need Colors of Mana. We need Ori. That's what we're missing here is an Ori. Opponent Thought Scours. Uh, we will blow the Blast Zone. We got most of the value out of our Surge Node. Kill the Delvers. Kill the Snapcaster. See what our opponent has. Cracks. Oh, we have so much mana. We just need... Actually, you know what else would do? It would be another uh, Cataracts. <laughs> another Cataracts would actually get it done. Opponent. Wow, they actually have a multicolor removal spell. All right, kills the Sphinx. Come on. Good draw. Good draw. Good draw. Surge node. Well, play Cataracts. Get in for one. Pass the turn. Oh, we're in fizzle mode at the moment. Tons of mana, but not much to do with it. Opponent, passing. Come on, Cataracts off the top. That would be the sweetest kill. We have one more. Tower. Well, play the tower. Actually, I don't think we attack because of Snapcaster. Opponent, untaps. Opponent plays the land. Nope. Charge up a Chalice. Cataracts, Cataracts. Chalice. Now, let's Chalice on two. Opponent. All right, going to kill Core Tapper. Well... Charge up a chalice. Mana leak? Okay. Well, charge up a chalice. I mean, we can easily pay for mana leak, so that's fine. Opponent mana leaks. We will pay. Chalice on two, go. All right. Come on. Something big. Something big. So this does keep us from dying to Croxa immediately, at least. Opponent thought seizes. Well, I'm sure that's our all is dust. Boy, this is going to come down to who top decks first. We've gone through two Delvers. We got Snapcaster and Croxa cut off at the moment, so hopefully most of our opponent's best threats are not actual threats. Thought Scours. Mills. Yeah, stuff they didn't really want. Come on. Second Cataracts. <laughs> That's the draw we want more than anything. Golos. Well, um, yeah, cast Golos. Does it resolve? They could have Archmage's Charm. Oh, it resolves. It resolves. Golos, good to stay Cataracts Part 2, and now we spin Golos, one of each color. I mean, this is a backup plan, but it potentially does work. One of each color, Golos. I'll play Inventor's Fair, cast Cornucopia, and yeah, pass the turn. All right, opponent. Well, I mean, we got him, unless he could do something. 
The double cataracts plan is not our most likely way to win, but it might be coming to fruition. Opponent passes. We gain a life. Well, I mean, cataracts. White, blue, black, red, green. Cataracts. White, blue, black, red, green. Door you? And our opponent sees what's happening and scoops it up? <laughs> yes! Well, I mean, yeah? That's not the primary way. The Ori is the main plan, but that is exactly the reason that we have two cataracts in our deck instead of one, is just for the possibility of exactly that happening. Huh? All right. <laughs> not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, this deck's sweet. Yeah, all right. Door nothingness. Got him, got him. So why don't we learn this week about five-color colorless door to nothingness and... The deck was surprisingly effective. We ended up going four in one. We killed, I think, almost every single win was due to door to nothingness. And our one loss was to Ponza, which I think is a tough matchup. We got Blood Moon one game. We got Blood Braid into Pillage one game. And even in those games, if our opponent like whiffed on a land destruction spell or the Blood Moon for one turn, we were in a position where we would have been able to win the game. So we are able to take down like Death and Taxes, a Stone Blade deck, Grixis Delver, Devoted Vizier combo, and almost, almost, almost Ponza as well. Well, so the deck actually works surprisingly well. And I gotta say, on one hand, that kind of makes sense. Like, the artifact ramp plan is a pretty sweet and effective way to ramp. So we know that that part of the deck can actually be pretty powerful. The more shocking part, I think, is our Chromatic Ori, Door to Nothingness, Sphinx of the Guild Pack plan. Like, that was absolutely absurd. Chromatic Ori is so incredibly perfect for Door to Nothingness, I think it is the best way to pull off the combo. Like, everything about it is, like, built to make this combo happen. Happen. So that was really sweet to see that work in action. More importantly, Sphinx of the Guild Pack, that is a sneaky all-star. That's our that's our card, let's say. That's our super budget-friendly version of card. But really, Sphinx comes down. Almost all of our opponents could just not kill it because of the per, uh, hex proof from monocolored. So pass and fatal pushes and doom blades, you name it, like 90% of the removal can't actually deal with Sphinx. So it comes down, it blocks forever, opponent can't kill it, it can attack planeswalkers, and it's an insane source of card advantage with our chromatic Ori. So all around... The deck was sweet. The deck was way sweeter than I would have thought. It worked really well. It is certainly possible to win some games with a five-color colorless deck. And this was the best that Door to Nothingness has ever been by far. Like, we've played Door to Nothingness a couple times in the semi-distant past. Once with Wilderness Reclamation. Once with Primal Surge. Those decks, it was really hard to get the Door to Nothingness skill. I think we had more door to nothingness kills in this one video of five matches that we've had in the entire history of playing door to nothingness before it actually was the perfect door to nothingness deck so the deck was sweet the deck was surprisingly good at winning we did crazy things we played weird janky cards so i really love this deck but anyway that's what our gets odds for this week five color colorless door to nothingness for modern thanks so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.